What if I told you there are creatures lurking in every corner of America? Some you've never heard of. Some you'll wish you hadn't. And these aren't just spooky campfire stories. Some people swear that they've encountered the impossible. Ever wondered what lurks in the shadows of your state? Join me in this series as we uncover the scariest cryptid from every corner of the USA. This is going to be a five-part series, and I will be choosing states at random using a wheel generator state thing. You know what I mean. And I will be dropping these randomly throughout the next couple of weeks as I gear up and get ready for TikToktober. That's right, the series that started it all, where most of you probably found me for the first time, the TikToktober 31 Days of Terror Challenge Series Video Every Day thing that I do in October. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I should probably clean that up. So be on the lookout for that. I'll be posting a video every day in October and I'm gonna need you guys to join me because it's gonna be a lot of work. So I know everybody can't make it every day. I get it. You guys got lives, but you know, it is gonna be a lot of work. So I appreciate it if you could tune in. But anyway, today we're talking about cryptids. You guys have been asking for it. I'm gonna finally do it. And I may do more cryptid videos in the future, but for now we're gonna be talking about the most terrifying cryptid in every state. And this was from some official list that I found. So this was somebody's opinion on these cryptids. But what you will notice is there's a lot of overlap amongst these cryptids and I do have a theory about that that I'm gonna put at the very end of the last video so be sure and tune in for that so without further ado or whatever you know, I'll put in a drum roll sound as we go through I will delete the states that we've done and then uh, we'll go through till the very end until we get to the last one without further ado let's see what our very first state's gonna be Brr, Utah Utah it is the Utah Bear Lake Monster the Bear Lake Monster is a serpent like creature said to inhabit Bear Lake Utah it's described as being over 50 feet long with a dark smooth body and powerful jaws. The monster is an expert swimmer, able to navigate the depths of the lake with ease. Weaknesses, it says it's never been documented attacking humans and prefers deep water. This is a nice little cryptid. This comes up when you search for the Bear Lake monster, but I think that's just an AI T-Rex. Let's check out what TikTok has to say about this bad boy. The Bear Lake monster is a creature allegedly sighted in Bear Lake at the Utah-Idaho border. It's said to resemble a serpentine creature with legs prowling along the shoreline. Some claim it to be anywhere from 30 to 50 feet long with menacing spikes along its spine and its head being crocodile or walrus. Despite the original articles mentioning the creature being found to be false, sightings persist. Is something that big really swimming in Bear Lake, perhaps? Utah. The Bear Lake monster isn't anything like a sea bear. It's actually much, much worse. The legend grew from articles written in the 1800s when a Mormon settler in the area began reporting second-hand accounts, but later on said he was lying. Although I'm kind of assuming he may have just been doing this to save face. Because back in the day, if people didn't think that you were actually all there mentally, they wouldn't want anything to do with you. And I only bring this up because this creature was supposedly spotted in 2002. Not all of the accounts of the monster align, but one thing that they all have in common is that it resembles a serpent with legs and is around 30 feet long. Sometimes it swims very slowly and other times it moves faster than a freight train. Either way, I'd be careful in the waters of Bear Lake. Uh, take this with a grain of salt. Somebody in the comments said, It is supposed that there is a tunnel from Bear Lake and Loch Ness and that it is the same monster. So, could just be Lo uh, Nessie swimming around the whole world and popping up in different lakes and stuff. Take me out to the back of the shed Shoot me in the back of the head Take me out to the back of the shed And shoot me in the back of the Bear Lake Monster is huge and looks like a crocodile with a jaw similar to that of extinct carnivorous aquatic lizard in 1868. There was prize money for who they could, for whoever could catch it. Unfortunately, no one has gotten it. Holy run on sentence. Whoa. Is that it? I don't know, man. Could be a monster. It does look a little bit like a dragon popping out of the water, but yeah, I don't know. So what do you think? Urban legend or friendly lake monster? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's see what the Wheel of Fortune has in store for us next. All right, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Hawaii. All right, cool. Hawaii's got a good one, actually. I like Hawaii. I've already looked into it a little bit. This is going to be a good one. Hawaii has this adorable little guy, which are called the Minahune. And the Minahune are small dwarf-like people. I don't think you're supposed to call them dwarf-like. Uh, the Minahune are small people from Hawaiian folklore. They're like little people. 
I think that's the correct vernacular you're supposed to use. From Hawaiian folklore, believed to be excellent builders who live deep in the forests and valleys of the Hawaiian Islands. The Minahune are masters of construction and stealth, and are able to build complex structures overnight and remain unseen. Sneaky little boogers. They are shy and avoid human contact at all costs, making them more mysterious than threatening. If you're in Hawaii and you come across strange structures or feel like you're being watched in the forest, it could be the Minahune. Respect the land and leave them alone. Uh, which, side note, if you go to Hawaii, you need to be respecting the land anyway. Don't go there giving American tourists a bad name. I know they're American too, but you know what I mean. As a matter of fact, I'm going off on a tangent here. When you go to any country, you need to be respectful of their cultures and customs. And don't be taking your American bullcrap to them and expecting them to acquiesce to your ways and desires. Because that's not how it works. We're not the whole world. Let's see what TikTok has to say about it. This girl is from Hawaii, so I thought it would be good to hear from her first. Sup, Palala? So Hawaiian Legends and Beliefs Part 7, the Menehune. So the legend goes that Menehune were very mischievous dwarves, short people, about two feet tall. And they were extremely smart, strong, and excellent craftsmen. So they would build things like fish ponds, roads, houses, temples, overnight. And it is said that if they didn't finish their project overnight, they would just leave it unfinished like that. They would just abandon it. Um, it is also said that they were not supposed to be seen by people. So they would only come out at night to do their work. And there is a legend that a pair of siblings saw them one night and the Menehune turned them into uh, stone pillars. That would suck. Okay. Thank you! Hey, shout out to Aloha, it's Chalet. Chale, Chale? Aloha, it's Chalet. C-H-E-L-E-I. I think I'm saying that right. Che Chele? Chele? Sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. You probably won't see this lady, but uh, thank you for the information. That's interesting. They are mischievous little dudes, huh? But it's kind of cool that they just build stuff. I don't know. In Hawaiian mythology, the Menehune are a race of small people who inhabit the forests and valleys of the Hawaiian Islands. Standing at a height of two to three feet, they are known for their mischievous and prankster-like nature. These crafty beings survive on a diet consisting of bananas and fish and possess the remarkable ability to magically construct structures overnight. So yeah, the Menehune. Interesting, they sound like other little guys, little mischievous guys from folklore various parts of the world i don't know leprechauns windows maybe even fairies i don't know just a thought back to the wheel and then there were 48 all right so let's see what they have next for us oh oregon let's go it's kind of what my background looks like i feel like that might be oregon I thought I was going to do Oklahoma, my home state, but Oregon it is! In Oregon, we have Colossal Claude. It's a fun little artist rendering of him, I thought. Colossal Claude is a sea serpent said to live in the waters off the coast of Oregon, particularly near the Columbia River. Description suggests it is around 40 feet long with a snake-like body and a large camel-like head. It's interesting, a little bit different, but another one that falls under the Nessie style of sea serpent monsters, cryptids, or whatever. Its strengths are that it is highly agile in water, capable of disappearing into the ocean depths. Colossal Claude's weaknesses are unknown, but it does not appear to show aggression towards humans, and it tends to avoid boats. Smart Claude. If you are boating, fishing, or swimming near the Columbia River, and you happen to see something strange in the water, probably best to keep a safe distance. As always, let's see what TikTok has to say about this big old water puppy. Oregon, Colossal Claude. In the dark waters of the North Coast, the monstrous Colossal Claude looms. A creature of legend, with a body as wide as a ship and a neck that stretches eight feet long. Its head, described as evil and serpentine, or resembling a maned camel, has the power to freeze the bravest of sailors in fear. First spotted in 1934, the crew of the Columbia River Lightship caught a glimpse of the beast, but were denied the chance to investigate further, as their superiors feared Colossal Claude would sink their small boat. Three years later, another crew encountered the monster, providing a chilling confirmation of its existence. And in 1939, the crew of the Argo fishing vessel had a close encounter with the monster, witnessing its glassy eyes, gray coarse fur, and a head like a camel's. Though sightings of Colossal Claude have been rare since the 1950s, the terror of this legendary sea monster still haunts the waters, a reminder of the unknown horrors that lurk beneath the surface. Shout out to Brett Larson, that's not even the account that I found this video on. Somebody apparently re-uploaded his video. I don't know who Brett Larson is, but it was a good video, so shout out to him. Uh, thanks for the rundown on Colossal Claude. This is a little side tangent since we're on Oregon, but uh, 
The world's largest living organism is a colossal fungus in Oregon that spans an astonishing 2,385 acres. This massive marvel, known as Armillaria or the humongous fungus, lies hidden beneath the Malheur National Forest, quietly thriving for thousands of years. Imagine walking over the forest floor, unaware that below your feet, an ancient fungal network stretches for miles, blending seamlessly with the natural landscape. This giant fungus primarily exists underground, with its vast web of mycelium, the root-like structure of fungi, spreading out over an area equivalent to 1,665 football fields. Above ground, it produces honey-colored mushrooms that are just the visible tip of this incredible biological iceberg. These mushrooms are only a small fraction of the organism, hinting at the sprawling network concealed beneath the soil. Scientists discovered this fungal giant in the late 1990s, using DNA testing to confirm that what seemed like separate fungal patches were actually interconnected parts of a single organism. This revelation highlights the fascinating complexity of fungal life and its ability to sustain such a massive, interconnected network over millennia. Armillaria's toys age is estimated to be around 2,400 years, making it not just vast in size but also ancient in history. The humongous fungus plays a crucial role in its ecosystem, breaking down dead wood and contributing to nutrient cycling. Yet, despite its importance and size, it remains invisible to the casual observer. This hidden giant serves as a powerful reminder of the wonders lurking just beneath the surface of our natural world, waiting to be discovered. If you haven't seen Fantastic Fungi, it is on Netflix, I believe, and you should go watch it right now because it talks about this in a much better, way less AI voice. It's Paul Stamets, who I respect highly and love his work and have followed for a long time. And it's just an amazing documentary and it talks a lot about this. I don't remember if it's only about this, this specific patch of mycelium this thing like communicates dude i think there's so much we don't understand about mushrooms and fungi and stuff and they fascinate me so i don't like them on my pizza but they fascinate me anyway back to colossal clod because we're not talking about fungus today have you heard of colossal clod also known as marvin the monster this cryptid was first spotted off the coast of oregon near the mouth of the columbia river in 1934 by the first mate of a light ship the creature was described as a 40 foot long, tan to gray colored, hairy creature with a round body, green looking tail, and a head that looked like a cross between a horse and a snake. Between 1937 and 1939, Claude was spotted again up and down the Oregon coast and as far north as Canada. In 1963, the Shell Oil Company captured video of a creature that is believed to be Colossal Claude. Some think it was just a whale or a giant jellyfish, giant seahorse, or a surviving plesiosaur. Well, what do you think of Colossal Claude? Leave a comment and like and follow for more. This guy is Strangeology, if I've never pointed that out before. He does really good content, and I don't usually use his videos, but uh, he does really good content, and I like his videos a lot. I do think it's a possibility that these are all, like, leftover dinosaurs that we're still seeing in the waters in certain places, especially the ones that are in the oceans or things that are connected to the ocean, which I guess I remember geology class. Aren't all water sources connected to the ocean except for ponds and lakes? But all freshwater sources are or something like that. But yeah, all rivers, they eventually run to the ocean, right? So it's possible. Maybe one just swam up thousand years ago has been living up in lakes ever since. Or these are just like interdimensional beings and they're aliens that zip in and out of our reality. Who knows? And also, check out this adorable little toy you can get. I like when the areas play into their urban legends and stuff. I think that's fun. Wish more places would do it. Is Colossal Claude some distant cousin of the Loch Ness Monster? Is it the Loch Ness Monster itself? Are these things leftover dinosaurs? Or are they just logs floating in the water and people with wild imaginations? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I personally am inclined to believe all these people, at least some of them are seeing something. I'm sure some of them are seeing things that they're, you know, putting a little spin on it, but I think some of these people have got to be seeing something. Uh, back to the wheel. What does the magic wheel have for us next? New Mexico, all right. Walter White, the New Mexico Terratorns. I will say for the record, uh, some websites are spelling it Terratornis with a I-S at the end instead of Torns, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. But we're gonna go with Terratorns because that's what it says in this fun little image. Mexico Terratorns are believed to be giant prehistoric birds that have been sighted in New Mexico. Resembling enormous vultures, these creatures have wingspans reported to be over 20 feet wide. That's crazy, that's a big ass bird. Look at that dang thing, that's crazy. Their strengths are their massive wings, which allow them to soar over great distances and swoop down on prey with terrifying speed. Their weaknesses are that while formidable in the air, they seem to avoid humans and have no known aggressive encounters. That's good. If you're in New Mexico, don't gotta worry about the 20 foot bird. Is this where they got Big Bird from? If you encounter a Terratorn, avoid startling it. 
Stay indoors or undercover as it likely won't attack unless provoked. Good to know. This is the New Mexico Territorn, another dinosaur that refuses to stay extinct. In 2007, <laughs> a man reported seeing two enormous bird-like creatures with wingspans of over 20 feet gliding along the Oregon Mountains in New Mexico. There have been similar reports throughout New Mexico since the 1800s. Many believe these are the extinct raptor-like Territorns that occupied these lands over 6,000 years ago. But scientists are very skeptical. Where's next? You decide. <laughs> I guess funny. That's Psychopoly on TikTok. So shout out to him. Probably have to remove that song because I'm pretty sure it's going to get copyrighted, but I'll handle it. Hello and welcome to the Minutes Within the Mist, where we look to the skies to bring you cryptids, ghosts, and other mysteries. Today we discuss the flying dinosaurs to tell you about the territories. On July 19th of 2007, Looks like a Cruces 80s video game. Resident Dave Zander reported two enormous bird-like creatures with wingspans of at least 20 feet wide gliding along the Oregon Mountains. They seemed to resemble living pterodactyls. Zander had lived near the Dona Ana Mountains for more than 30 years and had never seen anything like them before. However, his sighting was not isolated. There had been multiple sightings throughout New Mexico since the late 1800s. Cryptozoologist and Arthur Ken Gerhard said that he believes that the creatures sighted were surviving prehistoric raptor-like creatures known as teratorns. These flying monsters are believed to have occupied the area as recently as 6,000 years ago. They had, during their time, ruled the skies, hunting during the day and using the warm air for flight. However, they were able to move just as well on the ground. Well-preserved remains of the prehistoric creatures have been discovered in caves and isolated ravines, leading credence to the belief, though Picture many scientists awful. are skeptical that the creatures still exist. These large prehistoric creatures have been compared to the ancient Thunderbird from Native American mythology. Mm -hmm. Many of those sightings have occurred along the Rio Grande and the surrounding areas. This makes the Territorn the most frightening, scientifically supported legendary creature of the modern Southwest. So it is possible that there are still flying dinosaurs circling the skies of New Mexico. I hope you enjoyed these minutes with the Territorns and will join us at the Within the Mist podcast for more in-depth stories about cryptids, ghosts, and other mysteries. Uh, if you're in New Mexico and you've seen any giant birds flying around your skies, I'm gonna need you to let me know about that immediately. Somebody would have saw this, right? Unless they're just in like some desolate place of New Mexico that nobody ever goes. Like Walter White. If you're out there watching this, Walter White, please comment below. I'd love to be your friend. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't wanna know that guy. And he's dead. Oops. <laughs> Sorry if you haven't finished that 10 year old show yet. To be fair, I never finished it either because Yahoo ruined it for me. Those bastards. What do you think about the Thunderbird, the Terratorn? Do you think these things are out there somewhere? Do you think somebody's messing with people with a drone and a kite attached to it? Does that work? Mm, time to go back to the wheel. Give me a good one, Spinny Boy. Oh, I already know what this one's gonna be. I think you all know what this one's gonna be too, right? West Virginia. Oh, we know the Mothman well. We've talked about him many times on this channel. It is horrifying. Imagine a giant moth and a man swooping down on you. Ugh, no thank you. Mothman is a humanoid creature with large wings and glowing red eyes. First sighted in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1966, by the way. It's often associated with disaster with sightings preceding tragic events like bridge collapses. Strengths are that Mothman can fly, obviously. And it has an eerie ability to predict future calamities. Interesting. Why is he always there? It's weaknesses. It doesn't seem to interact with people directly, but rather acts as a harbinger of doom. Creepy. If you happen to see the Mothman, stay vigilant, as it might be an omen of something bad to come. Avoid confrontation and leave the area quickly. Let's check out the handy dandy TikTok. The Mothman legend began in 1966 in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Witnesses described seeing a human-like figure with glowing red eyes and enormous wings. The first sighting was reported by two couples driving through the TNT area, an abandoned World War II munitions site. Over the next year, numerous sightings were reported, culminating in the tragic Silver Bridge collapse in December 1967, which resulted in 46 deaths. Many locals believe the Mothman was an omen of the disaster. 
Speculations include a misidentified bird, a supernatural entity, or even an alien. Despite various theories, the true nature of the Mothman remains an unsolved mystery, captivating the imagination of those who dare to delve into its haunting tale. A little bit of background on who he is, what he is. I don't think that was an AI voice, but it might have been. There's a lot of AI pictures. One of the most well-known haunted or cryptid story from the Appalachian area is the Mothman. But many people don't know his entire story, so I want to get into it from start to current. So let's get into it. The first reported occurrence would come from two grave diggers. Now what did they see? They reported seeing a very large humanoid figure with giant wings and red eyes sitting on top of a tree. Now just as soon as they make eye contact with this thing, it leaps from the tree and flies away right over them. The next sighting would occur a few years later to two couples who were driving through the TNT bunker area of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And they would also report seeing a large humanoid figure with very large wings and red eyes. So they see this thing, they're in their car, and they immediately speed off. But this thing chases them. And mm -hmm. as their car hits 100 mile per hour trying to get away from this thing, it is keeping up speed. So they go straight to the police station and file a report. And then after that, they go to the newspapers to tell them what they saw, and the newspapers deem this creature the Mothman, which is what it's known as today. Reports of this creature began to flood in, and they were super similar with the way he looks, but some stories were different. Reports also started coming in of strange lights flying around the sky and intimidating men in dark sunglasses and black suits walking around. Like I said, there was a lot of encounters that were reported, but one that sticks out to me happened to a man in Salem, West Virginia. He reported that he was watching TV one night and strange shapes began to show up on his TV while strange noises began happening outside. As soon as he stepped outside to investigate the strange noises, he was met with a horrible feeling, like instant dread. But that was not the only thing he was met with. He was also met with a pair of glowing red eyes. His dog would disappear soon after this, and he blames that figure for his dog disappearing. Now, most sightings of the Mothman revolve around you just seeing him and being chased, but some people actually report that he spoke to them and that he spoke of unspeakable tragedies that were going to occur to this town. And unfortunately, a bit after, that is what happened to Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Slightly before Christmas in 1967, a giant bridge holding rush hour traffic would collapse. Unfortunately, this would cause 50 people to lose their lives. Countless people report seeing the Mothman just before the bridge collapsed. Now, after this, sightings did begin to decline, but they never stopped, and he's still spotted to this day. Now, there are, of course, a lot of skeptics with this story, and one in particular was Dr. Robert Smith. He believes that the Mothman is nothing more than a sandhill crane that got into the materials of the TNT bunker and looks a little odd. I don't know about that. The most widely believed theory for skeptics is that it started off as a joke and spiraled out of hand. I feel like that one is probably more believable. Either way, the story flourished, and there's even a festival to celebrate the Mothman every this year in true. Pleasant, West Virginia. This year, it's being held on September 16th and 17th. I did want to leave you with this picture. I saw oh, it while yeah. I was researching, and it is believed to be an actual captured picture of the Mothman. When I showed you a second ago. Uh, shout out to Morgs Hauntings on TikTok. That's who that creator is. Uh, we've seen her stuff before. She makes really good content, tells really good stories. So uh, go give her a follow, check her stuff out. I do feel as a creator who tries to stay as honest and as real with you guys, it is my duty to show you the top comment on this video. Mothman is the second most daddy of all cryptids. Who's the first? <laughs> Uh, you people are freaks. Uh, okay, look. Have you ever gotten hit in the face with a moth and it scares the crap out of you? Uh, what's his name? Patton Oswalt does a joke about it. A moth hits you in the face, you're like, oh, that thing has to die. I don't necessarily think all moths have to die. That's kind of rude. But if one hits you in the face, like, you're going to swat at it, you know? Imagine if a six-foot moth hit you in the face. No, thank you. And that's why I don't go to West Virginia. Just kidding. I've just never been there. But I know we've got some West Virginia subscribers out there, so, uh... I've even talked to some of you about the Mothman before, I believe, so let me know if you've had any experience, if you've ever seen the thing, uh, or if you know the guy. I'd love to get an interview with him. That'd be cool, too. Mm, bring back the wheel. What you got for me, wheelie baby? Ne Montana. Montana has the Shunka Waterkin. I think I'm saying that right. Love this thing. It's a puppy. Nope, it's not a puppy. Chunka Waterkin is a wolf-like cryptid from Native American folklore, believed to be larger and more ferocious than a typical wolf. If you guys seen wolf videos, those things are huge. I never realized, I thought they were like a little bit bigger than dogs. They're like twice the size of big dogs. Anyway, some describe the Shunka Waterkin as a long-bodied, dark-furred creature that resembles a hyena. Its strengths are that it's incredibly strong and fast, as you would assume. Able to hunt and take down large prey with ease. I know that picture is sad, but it's not real. It's a drawing, I promise. It's just a little puppy. I'm just a little mm. Mm. Its weaknesses are that it's very elusive and it typically sticks to the wilderness, rarely coming close to human in settlements. 
So it's probably why nobody ever sees them. This is one allegedly taxidermied, which is real and is sad. And I'm sorry, but there's not very many pictures of this thing out there. So I wanted to show you. If you spot a Shunko Wadokan, keep your distance. It's a dangerous predator and avoiding confrontation is the best strategy. We'll get rid of this and see what TikTok has to say. Uh, this account, by the way, I'm not sure if I said it earlier, but I think we saw one of his videos earlier. Uh, Adventure, Explore, Discover. Just three words, Ex Adventure, Explore, Discover on TikTok. So I'm gonna go check out some more of his videos. He makes good content too. He's not a very big account, so you know, go follow him, check him out. This monster isn't as far-fetched as some. The Shunko Wadakin is a Native American name given to this beast and for good reason. The word translates into carrying off dog because it would sneak into tribes at night and do just that. Many white settlers believed that this was just a myth until they caught sight of the creature themselves in the 1880s. And everyone who has seen it since has basically described the same thing. They say that it's nearly black and has high shoulders and a back that sloped downward. Kinda sounds like a hyena, but legend or not, I would just keep your dogs in at night. Yeah, it could just be some big ass hyena, you know? Out there terrorizing puppies. If not friend, why friend shaped? Montana, Shunka Warrikin. Yeah. The Shunka Warrikin is a mysterious beast that roams the Montana wilderness. Described as a wolf or hyena-like creature, it is said to be nearly black in color with a high shoulder and sloped back. The first written report of this cryptid dates back to the 1880s when settlers first arrived in Montana. Native American Probably have to remove this song, but this beat goes kind of hard. Meaning, carrying off dogs, as it was known to sneak into camps at night and steal. This dude... The creature's presence still evokes fear and uncertainty in the hearts of many who live in the region. This dude just this straight up stole that other guy's... Order my new book, Cryptids of the USA. Script for his video. Most famous mythical creature in each state. Montana. This is the Shunko Werrican. Quick disclaimer, this monster is real. According to American folklore, the Shunko Werrican looks like a wolf hyena hybrid. In 1896, a man in Sun Ranch, Montana killed and mounted what was believed to be the Shunko Werrican that was pestering local natives for generations. There's a picture of it. But later in 2006, an unusual looking wolf killed 120 sheep and many believe it was another Shunko Werrican. Top comment, choose the next date. Again, that was Psychopoly. Uh... He's funny. I like his videos. So shout out to him uh, for another quick little rundown on the Shunko Wardekin. But I think we get it, right? It's a hyena dog. It reminds me of the dogs from the Lion King, chewing on their own leg. Look at you guys. He's cute. I don't know. What do you want from me? Back to the wheel. Hit me one time, Willie boy. Uh, Alabama. All right. Let's see what Alabama got for us. And Alabama's gonna give us our first Bigfoot-like creature. We have the Alabama White Thang. T-H-A-N-G, that's how they spell it. I don't know what you want from me. The White Thang. But it looks like a big old man bear pig. Dog, bear, Sasquatch type of thing. Like a white Bigfoot. Alabama would have a white Bigfoot. The White Thang is a mysterious seven to eight foot tall creature with long white hair, resembling a mix between a Bigfoot and an albino wolf. It's most commonly spotted in the Appalachian foothills. Appalachian, I don't care. Strengths are that the creature is known for its extraordinary speed and its terrifying, almost human-like scream that has startled many witnesses. Its weaknesses are that it's elusive and rarely aggressive. It tends to avoid human contact. As with, I think, every other one on this list so far. Uh, also, when you draw it like a Pokemon, it's super freaking cute, because look at that. I want that Pokemon. Encounter strategy. If you see the white thing, Stay calm. It's not known to attack humans, but its scream can leave you rattled. Distance is your friend, as with most of these cryptids. Cause look at that guy. He is not friendly. He wants to eat your face, like he's been doing bath salts all weekend or something. And this is a video from a creator whose entire account is based around being from Alabama. So uh, Alabama Folk Talk, you can check her out on TikTok. That's with all of these. Welcome to Alabama Folk Talk. Sit down for a spell and let me tell you a story. Deep in the woods of North Alabama, there's said to be a creature lurking around, but there ain't been no proof of it yet. Covered in thick white hair and towering between seven and eight feet tall, some say it looks like it's got the body of a kangaroo with a head like a big house cat. <laughs> Others paint a picture of something resembling a white lion. It ain't got no ears you can distinguish and either has no visible eyes or they're described as bright red. It lets out an eerie screech too that sounds like a woman screaming. Old things pretty quick, which I guess is why one ain't been caught. People around Morgan, Etowah, and Jefferson counties have reported the most sightings, but there's a lot of folks all over North Alabama who've said they've come up on one before 
keeping the mystery and mystique alive since the early 1900s. Y'all ever heard of the famous Alabama White Fang or had an experience you'd like to share? Do at this video. I'd love to hear your story. So I'm sure it's the white thing is just what they tried to call it. But because they're in Alabama, it's the white thing. Anybody in Alabama, have you ever seen the white thing? <laughs> Not making fun. It's just, come on, it's funny. You gotta spell shit differently because the way you talk, it's crazy. My whole family talks like that. I'm allowed to say it, all right? Yeah, I don't know. Interesting that we have so many Sasquatches and Loch Ness Monsters all over the place. Makes you think. Maybe we do have some undiscovered stuff out there, you know? Give me my wheel. What you got for me, big cheese? Another A? Arkansas. Arkansas. I'm joking. Nobody calls it Arkansas unless you're in Kansas. And even then people look at you weird. Arkansas has the Falk Monster and is another community that leans into the fun of the urban legend. They have the Falk Monster Festival every year, which they have been holding since at least the 80s. So that's cool. Another Bigfoot-like creature, the Falk Monster, often called the Southern Sasquatch, roams the swamps and rivers of Arkansas. It's a large ape-like creature with red eyes and foul-smelling fur. You know, you probably smell pretty foul too if you didn't have indoor plumbing and you had to bathe in a creek. Just saying. I was talking about these guys smelling. Yeah, they don't have showers. The Falk Monster is reportedly very fast and able to traverse dense, swampy terrain with ease. Its weaknesses are that it tends to keep to remote areas and avoids direct conflict with humans. If you encounter the Falk Monster, back away slowly, make no sudden movements, as it might feel threatened if you do. Also, I think this is just a guy in a Bigfoot costume. It doesn't look like the real Falk Monster to me. <laughs> this is worth pointing out. For the record, neither Denny nor the mayor have seen him. I've had friends that live back in the bottoms that uh, was telling me about the sighting, but they didn't want to say and mention anybody. They didn't want to be made fun of. I've never seen it, but it's I do have personal friends who I know personally. These people I've known for years who have sightings, and I'm not going to be the one to call them a liar. So, you know. What exactly lurks in the dark corners of the Arkansas swamps? The Boggy Creek Monster is a legendary creature said to haunt the swamps around northwestern Arkansas. Described as a seven-foot-tall hairy beast with glowing red eyes, the Boggy Creek Monster has terrified locals for decades. Sightings date back to the early 1900s with reports of the creature stalking the woods, leaving behind enormous footprints and emitting terrifying growls that echo through the night. Some say it's a creature from another time, while others believe it's something far more sinister. In light of all the purported sightings, you may be asking, what exactly lurks in the dark a bad loop. of the Arkansas swamps? Bad loop. But it seems... Like, they also kind of play into it a little bit. This is fun. They've got it on everything. Also, this place is now on my bucket list of places that I want to go. Uh, they did make a movie about it, The Legend of Boggy Creek. Which I'll show you the poster here in a minute. This music makes everything hella creepy. Why am I, dude, why am I lagging so hard? This place looks awesome. That's not real. Chat, is that real? This is all sightings? But they're seeing something out there. Maybe they got monkeys in Arkansas. We just never knew it. a big ass monkey though whoa that's a big foot <laughs> yeah, I did that because <laughs> it's like big foot Back to the wheel. Oh, that's not the wheel. There it is. Spin yourself, fool. Oh, oh, oh. Indiana. Indiania. Uh, the birthplace of Michael Jackson. Uh, is there anything else in Indiana? The creation place of Peyton Manning. Uh, let's just go see what we got for Indiana. 
The Indiana Beast of Busco. Now this is my kind of water monster, a giant freaking irradiated turtle, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know if he's irradiated, sorry for putting shame on his name. He might just be a giant turtle. The Beast of Busco is a giant turtle said to live in Churubusco, Indiana, particularly Folk Lake. This enormous snapping turtle has been described as large enough to capsize small boats. That is a big ass turtle. Another seemingly cool community that gets in on the fun, and check that out, turtle days right in the middle of Gemini season, gang gang. Oh, be careful, don't do that. People in the comments are calling you Luciferian. Jesus Christ. The Beast of Busco's strengths are its massive size and its hard shell, which make it nearly invincible in water. So if you're gonna take this thing on, it better be on land. Its only weaknesses are that it's rarely seen, and it seems to prefer the depths of the lake, avoiding humans. If you encounter this beast, stay out of the water. First and foremost, while it's not known to attack humans directly, its size makes it a dangerous presence. Yeah, this dude could just hurt you on accident. It doesn't even have to be trying. It could just swim by you and scrape you with that sharp ass shell and then you're gonna be bleeding. That's not good. Then you're gonna attract all the sharks in the lake. And you know what? I like strange allergies. So we're gonna start off with one of his TikToks because he's got he's had a TikTok, by the way, for every single one of these topics. So if you want to see his stuff, go check out his page. Strangeology on TikTok exactly how it sounds. There is a behemoth creature living in Indiana. In the late 1800s, rumors of a giant creature making its home on a farm in Churubusco began to draw the attention of curious visitors. Meet the Beast of Busco. It all started in 1898 when local farmer Oscar Folk began reporting that he was seeing this giant alligator snapping turtle on a seven acre lake on his I don't think that was a real photo. Word spread of this giant animal, but Oscar decided to stop talking about it so the creature would be left alone. Half a century later, in 1948, Churubusco residents Aura Blue and Charlie Wilson were fishing on the same lake, which is now known as Folk Lake. And that's when they saw it. It was a 500 pound snapping turtle with a shell the size of a dining room table. When asked, the then current property owner, Gil Harris, had confirmed turtle. that he, along with many others, had seen this beast too. Efforts were made to relocate this animal that everyone was now calling Oscar, as there was no sign of him even after draining the lake. Some think that Oscar Folk may have hoaxed the whole thing, or perhaps the giant alligator snapping turtle had moved on. And today, the town of Churubusco holds an annual festival in June, celebrating the legend of the Beast of Busco. But what do you think? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what state you want to hear about next. Go check out Strangeology on TikTok. There's a lot of topics, lots of interesting stuff. Does really good content. So go check him out. Yeah, what do you think about Beast of Busco? Is it just a overgrown snapping turtle? Did it get into some irradiated waste? Or is it just a thousand years old and has been around since the medieval times? Uh, either way, that's crazy. Or, you know, was it once again just a floating log that somebody thought was a giant turtle? One last time today, give me my wheel back. All right, last one of the day. Don't let me down, wheel. Wilbur, give me a good one. Oh, Texas. All right. What am I going to do in Texas? Now, y'all know why they have that saying, you don't mess with Texas, right? Because they got freaking chupacabras, man. Look at this thing. This is not friend, not friend shaped. Just so you know, look at that. That is terrifying. Chupacabra is a legendary creature known for draining the blood of livestock, especially goats. Sorry, goats. It is described as a reptilian or canine-like creature with sharp spines along its back and glowing red eyes. Why do they always have glowing red eyes, man? They just gotta be extra creepy. Their strengths is that they are stealthy, fast, and they have razor sharp fangs capable of draining blood. Gross. Don't drain blood, Chupacabra. You're way too cute for that. Hey, look, this guy's honestly kind of cute. He looks a little scary because he's got his teeth bared and his tail tucked, but he looks like a little baby ugly kangaroo. Like I could, That I could be friends with. The first picture? No. This guy? Absolutely. Now this is a buddy I could be friends with. Look how cute he is. I know he ain't got no fur, but he's still lovable. I'd cuddle that little guy. As long as he doesn't bite. Just give him treats. Uh, their weaknesses, they tend to avoid humans, focusing on livestock instead, so you probably don't have anything to worry about. If you suspect a chupacabra is nearby, keep livestock protected and avoid rural areas at night. Which probably should maybe do anyway. Don't tell me you walk by somebody carrying this guy on a- not carrying, but walking this guy on a leash. You're not gonna give him three head pets. Bring me home, TikTok. Texas. This little monster needs little to no introduction. The Chupacabra is said to inhabit the plains and mountains of Texas and the surrounding states. That's an ugly version. Well, it feeds on livestock and got its name from draining the blood of goats. This creature has been summoned Creepy up as just being a dog with mange, but if that were true, how did it manage to have its first sighting in Puerto Rico, move to Mexico, and travel up to Texas, all while making two puncture wounds on all of its victims and draining their blood? 
It just doesn't add up. The Chupacabra has two basic appearances. One resembles a rabid, mangled dog, while the other says it walks upright with large red bulbous eyes. I know we're kind of just focusing on the cryptids we're focusing on at the moment, but it does bring me back to my like shapeshifter theory. If there's one thing out there that can shapeshift, maybe all of these are the same thing. It's just a shapeshifter that can take all these different forms for whatever it needs to. Just a thought. Cause like they call they, they they show this as a chupacabra, but then they also show this is a chupacabra. So make it make sense. Is it a lizard dog or is it a dog dog? Lizard dog, ugly dog. He's not ugly. Let's be real. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. A terrifying creature has been spotted outside of a Texas zoo. Many are saying this is a chupacabra, so keep an eye out. What do you think? I like the way the AI guy says chupacabra. Many are saying this is a chupacabra. 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 So look, we may be picking up on a theme here. Most of these things you're going to want to just avoid. You don't want to be caught in the woods with one of these by yourself. And if you are, you don't want it to notice you. So just lay low, back away, or, you know, get out of the woods in the first place. Are any of these real? Are these all just made up and people in costumes? Just like Bigfoot, supposedly? But if there's so many of these being sighted, some of them gotta be real, right? Let me know in the comments, what cryptids do you believe in? Have you ever seen a cryptid? Or had an interaction that you thought might have been a cryptid? I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know that in the comments as well. But there you have it, folks. That is part one of my most terrifying cryptid from every state series. Like I said, this is going to be a five-part series. Uh, as you can see, this video was long enough, so I'm not going to make you sit to two hours of video at one time. Plus, I don't want to make two hours of video at one time. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for when I drop the next one. And don't forget, TikToktober next month. I'm going to be dropping a video every single day. It'll probably end up being some of these, to be honest. So, but yeah, 31 days of videos coming up next month. Probably be over 200 videos by the end of it. I don't know what I'm at now, but I gotta be close to 170. Anyway, you guys don't care. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to drop a like for me. It does spread the video to more people and it helps the gym crew grow even more and we can add even more great people to this awesome little community and other adjectives. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. I love you. So until next time, stay creepy.